very good afternoon to both of our guests, and thank you so much for joining us. But yeah. let me start uh, with you. You know, when we talk about Ingoma, what are we talking about? Well, Ingoma is um, loosely translated as music, but then again, like you know, the the kind of like wholeness that resides within our African languages, Ingoma also could mean healing. It could mean the drum. It could mean a process of of divination or divining or evoking something that's elsewhere in a different plane. So in many ways, I think Ingoma, you know, is is the hinge actually that connects music and the 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 importance of music as ritual. Mm -hmm. So it kind of brings the idea of ritual and that of music as opposed to maybe that of performance. Sure. So then it makes creates a different context for, for sound. Right. How would you describe, you know, we can do write-ups, sing a and call you everything under the sun, but how would you describe uh, the work that you do? Well, I guess most of it is cultural work. I think that, you know, encompasses everything. I do a, a lot of work of healing as well, but also I'm an improviser. But I, I think the main thing is, is really this, this um, connection to ritual and, and, and work as part of what has to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are joined uh, by uh, another musician, a very uh, powerful uh, sister of song, uh, and her name is Umsak. Siswam, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon, and a happy Heritage Day to you. I'll forever be grateful to the soul that introduced me to your music, because I think just like Kupundutuzwe is saying, you know, music can be about healing, because that's exactly what your music is. It's very cathartic. Where do you go um, to bring us the melodies that you bring us to write the words that you write. Thank you so much. Um, I think, yeah, I, I'm in the same space as Ufundutuzo, you know, speaking about ritual. It's really a way to access to your inner world, and that connects to, you know, a vertical and a, and a horizontal world. But, you know, for me, it's music comes from a place of, you know, overflow of the inner world, or even sometimes, um, a barrenness, you know, sometimes we're expressing because we want to fill up or we're expressing because we're empty and sometimes we're just spilling out and we're spilling over. So it's always a reflection of what's going on inside and that has got to do with um, many things that I think we can also add on. Yeah. Sure. Do you remember when you were introduced uh, to a song, uh, Msaki, that actually spoke to you where you knew, Wuti, this strikes a chord with you and this is what you would then want to pursue? I can't think of a, a, a moment. Actually, I, I actually can. There was a, my dad drove me to boarding school when I was in primary school, we were driving to Gramstown, and I heard um, Kajanin on, the, on his collection, you know, little Honda Ballad. And I remember just not understanding what she was saying, but being completely moved with what she had been beholding, whatever it is that her heart posture had been focused on affected me, and I was a child. But... I didn't know that it was going to be a path that I would follow. I was quite a late bloomer when it comes to music, but I, that's a significant moment when I was like, this thing moved me without me having a cognitive understanding of what was going on. Mm. Yeah. But when, when we talk about healing and music, sure. it's one of those where you listen to you on the piano and it just goes mm. deep within Omondu. Is that... Is that on purpose? Is that something that you set out to do? Or is this something that is delivered to you as your own process of, of healing? Sure. Yeah, I guess like, you know, part of my, the main focus in my journey has been like thinking about what it means to live in both worlds, that of being an artist, but that of being a healer as well. And, and, and to think of what lives in between and what connects these worlds. So, um, I think it's, it's just like part of the, the greater purpose of maybe why I'm here, you know. Mm -hmm. I keep feeling it's like it's more about why I'm here more than the things that I would maybe love to do. I just feel like I live inside of this work. Sure. You know, it's like it's, diff it's difficult to, to even see myself outside of it. But I think, I, again, like as we celebrate like Heritage Month, you know, it, it becomes you know, even more, like, important to think about where sound sits within these celebrations. And, uh, I mean, the elders have told us, actually, that, like, September, according to the African calendar, is the first month. And, and of course, we have evidence of the 12-stone calendar here. But also, when we think about the calendar, 
we think about the context of sound because in an African context, it all is built within this kind of like space of like time and how people thought about sound as part of ritual. So we sing certain songs during certain times and, and I kind of feel like more than any time now, I'm feeling quite strongly about like songs coming in different times and for particular purposes that are connected to the calendar and the greater sort of cosmic synchronicity. Sure. Why is that so important? Well, I think it's important just because being in the world is a totality of all these things. It's being in the sound. It's being in the song. You live your entire life as a song. Almost like every event is a kind of, it's a type of singing, is a kind of breaking, breaking into sound. So what, what really lives before the moment of breaking into sound is your entire life. So there is a way in which like, even our very being in this world is a way of singing, mm. I think. Sure. And, and I know System Psyche resonates with those kind of thoughts. It's a pity I can't hear her. I would love to hear oh, what she's okay. saying. Oh, um, okay. If we could please just uh, indulge uh, Uputi and have uh, Ifo back so that we can hear uh, Usisi Msagi as yeah, well on the floor. Yeah. Uh, Sisi, you know you think of um, the Atlant transatlantic uh, slave trade when people were taken from the continent uh, and taken outside of the continent. You know that song was a very important part of keeping people alive and keeping people uh, awake uh, in that time. When you think of moments like that, when you think of moments where your mother sang to you even unbeknown to you uh, in this realm just in terms of connecting spirituality and music how would you maybe capture that yeah so that's a very broad question but i think even the passage the water you know some of us remember songs that our mother sang to us in the room i have a song that i sang to my children in the room and the water transports that so the fact that you know our brothers and sisters were taken from us and the water was the barrier it's actually not, you know, it's also a connector and we haven't lost that connection. It's just a, you know, we're all scrambling to find a way back to each other. And, you know, just thinking about what did you, what you said about the seasons, um, I don't even have to know that it's September. I don't even have to know what time of the year it is, but there's something swelling in my body that's saying the spring equinox is here and that it's harvest time. It's time to share. It's time to, you know, um, it's time to shed. Uh, the, and so I think we're connected to these cycles and we're connected to the land and it speaks to us and song is always an indicator. All I want to do now is sing. All I'm doing is just, I'm out, the songs are pouring out of me. Um, the winter has passed and there's a shedding, there's a lightness of being. There's a way and a new way to hold truth and pain um, and, and spirit is leading that. So in fact, I'm reacting that to, to that and making an offering on Sunday, just a a show from my lounge, you know, charge, just a way to, you know, to also solidify this beginning of the year and this new cycle of, of becoming light and, and having joy as the compass. So I wish that for everyone. Actually. Sure, a new way to hold truth and pain. What fills your cup? Um, you know, what is it that you are able to tap into or is given to you uh, that you're able to pour out? Is this like directed to me or That's vision? directed to you. <laughs> oh, I mean, so many things. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's being able to pull out of my own thoughts and my own headspace and look at my children. That gives to me. But there's this infinite world, you know, that I feel like we're all connected to that I wouldn't be able to survive without. And it informs everything. And, and as, as I said, sometimes we express from a place of barrenness and we write songs that are sad. And sometimes we express from a place of joy. And I, I'm just so grateful that I've had music to travel through the joy and the pain. And I feel like the, the holding that in the balance has been part of my journey. You know, um, the joy is there. You can see it in, it's in, in very obvious ways. The fact that I like electronic music, but I'm, I'm singing protest songs at the same time. So holding that balance, I think, is my life's lesson. But right now I'm feeling like everything is tipping into a song of joy, you know. So that, that for me, having that connection and understanding that there's this nudge internally, that's kind of what keeps me on the inside. It's harvest season, but um, you, you talk about healing. Yeah. Who heals the healer? Uh, what fills your car up? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting you should ask that question because Zulubati Inyanga is a lapi, you know. 
And um, well, I think I understand like they speak from a different register, but, but there are many ways in which the sounds that reaches others must first heal the one that is projecting the sound. And um, you know, Sismusaki is talking about pain, and uh, I've been thinking quite a lot about like how sound actually refuses to be painful, though coming from a very painful place. Mm -hmm. so, so that in a sense, like the body becomes, you know, this room that hosts this particular sound. We could think of the universe in a similar way as a, as a field, an acoustic field. So, so in many ways, healing is about the readiness for, for that particular person to tap into that healing. But I feel like healing is that room that hosts everything. So we walk into that room. Mm. The thing is knowing that you have to enter. And, and that's how I heal. It's, it's knowing that I have to enter. Knowing that you have to enter. Yeah. I'd like us to talk about the instruments that we use sometimes to bring about the music. Sure. Um, there could be music in silence. There could be music of in course. using an instrument. We have the mbiras and we have many other instruments uh, on the continent. In terms of the usage and the distribution, do we find that Tina ourselves, before Siagude, we appreciate uh, what it is that we have and we know what yeah. it is that we have? That's, that's a very broad question, especially with regards to instruments. And, and of course, like in many ways, like dealing with the piano is dealing with a foreign instrument. And, and, and so for me, those questions were important. I'm really interested in how do we come to these instruments? And, and, and furthermore, how do we go inside these instruments? So I feel that there's a way that African instruments, like you mentioned, the mbiras and stuff, they have a music that they offer to the musician already. So if you were to pick it up, even without being like a great Mbira player, there is already music. So these instruments are kind. So in many ways, we come to these instruments looking for the same amount of love, the same amount of, you know, warmth. And, um, but also again, earlier on, you spoke about the diaspora. And we realize that like in this moment of displacement, it is important to use whatever tool to sort of evoke something. Mm. So we don't stop making those efforts of evoking something, evoking a deep memory of elsewhere. You know, if you think about the tra transatlantic narrative, these people were trying to s sound out a, a, a message from elsewhere, a utopian home, a place that some of them couldn't recall. So instruments, though they were foreign, but there was a way in which they started speaking a particular dialect. And if you think about the blues, I think it's one of the most African sounds that you can ever find. But to think that there was no mbira, there was no kora when that sound was produced, tells us a lot about like how we sometimes are sounding out things from an echo that are traveling and displaced from the mother, from the womb, but they are able to survive you know, and, and, and somewhat connected. Like Sismus like is talking about, like, we are connected to these things anyway. Mm -hmm. It's like these cycles, we are connected to them. Sure. So I think it's very interesting to look at the continent and what we have, but also to think about the, the diaspora as a kind of sometimes the most ancient memory of what we can remember mm -hmm. as these, like, is two you know, that were sent across, you know, to keep the, the very essence of, you know, Sure. of who we are and sometimes we don't necessarily think about it like that sure. but I think jazz pushes us to think about what it means to carry something from an echo where it's displaced from the, the sound itself the resonator. Sism Saki, can language be used as an instrument in music? Definitely I mean with, with a lot of our languages there's just again like a very kind built-in song that you find you know um, I'm, I'm just thinking a lot about how, you know, part of my, like, journey of getting to know myself has just been through understanding idioms, understanding ways of, of putting language down and, and how it, like, changes when it has a melody. And, and also just, you know, it's been a way to unlearn, but it's been the most empowering process. Like, the one thing that I can do, you know, there, there's so many things that I can't fix about how I've been brought up and you know, how sort of neo-colonial neo thought has, in, has influenced my journey as an artist. In fact, Indenze Umdu, who is um, in fact, in my language because of 
of, of the way that it's disrupted my learning. But the power that I've found in just going to unlearn and how to pick up the things that I could have learned and, and going, going to just my family, you know, going to my grandfather's songs, um, hearing what he used to write and say, um, the, way, the way he used to phrase things, his sense of humor, languages played a part in all of that. It's my connection to my mother. It's how we, it's our love language. And the phrase, to get all of those like nuances. Man, it's been the, the most exciting part of um, my life learning as, a, as an artist and my self-directed, you know, education. So um, I hope, I just hope that it's, it's something that we can value and pass on to kids when they're quite young. So that we don't lose any more, you know. I, I want to be the stop nonsense of loss in sure. terms of this um, phenomenon. Be the stop nonsense of loss. Uh, to both of you, something that is very valuable is the work that you do, and Enko Sikakulu, Sisim Saiki, an artist and a musician, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Pianist, Ndutuzo Makatin. Siya Bonga Patuan.